Welcome back, wonderful people. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War uh, teaser trailer is already out. And for you who don't know, the Black Ops Cold War is the next Call of Duty title that is due to be revealed next Wednesday on the 26th of August. From the moment teaser was released, it sparked an immediate debate about the character who is basically appearing during the whole teaser, talking about the socialism, talking about KGB, and how the agency is trying to infiltrate the Western countries and change the perception of the public on the Western way of life. When I said a mysterious character from the teaser, I'm talking about the main narrative of Mr. Yuri Bezmenov, who is basically a defected KGB agent that defected to the United States of America, and he later dedicated his work in trying to warn the Western countries and governments about the plans of KGB to change their societies. So this video is going to be dedicated to the main protagonist of the teaser that we all saw and I'm talking again about Mr. Yuri Bezmenov. And this is one full comprehensive uh, biography of the man that we saw in a teaser for the next Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War game. Yuri Alexandrovich Bezmenov, known by alias Thomas David Schumann, was a Soviet journalist for RIA Novosti and a former PGU KGB informant who defected to Canada. After being assigned to a station in India, Bezmenov eventually grew to love the people and the culture of India. At the same time, he began to resent the KGB-sanctioned repression of intellectuals who descended from Moscow policies. He decides to defect to the West. Bezmenov is best remembered for his anti-communist lectures and books from the 80s. Bezmenov was born in 1939 in Moscow to Ukrainian parents. His father was a high-ranking Soviet army officer, later put in charge of inspecting Soviet troops in foreigner countries. Bezmenov's father died in the 1970s when Yuri Bezmenov was 17. He entered the Institute of Oriental Languages, a part of the Moscow State University, which was under the direct control of the KGB and the Communist Central Committee. In addition to languages, he studied history, literature and music, and became an expert on Indian culture. During his second year, Bezmenov sought to look like a person from India. His teachers encouraged him because graduates of the school were employed as diplomats, foreigner journalists or spies. As a Soviet student, he was also required to take compulsory military training in which he was taught how to play strategic war games, using the maps of foreigner countries as well as how to interrogate prisoner of war. After graduating in 1963, Bezmeno spent two years in India working as a translator and public relations officer with the Soviet economical aid group Soviet Refineries Constructions, which built refinery complexes. In 1965, Bezmenov was recalled to Moscow and began to work for RIA Novosti, or News, as an apprentice uh, for their class field department of political publications. He soon discovered that uh, about three quarters of Novosti's staffers were actually KGB officers, with the reminder being co-ops of KGB freelance writers and informers like himself. However, Bezmenov did not do real freelance writing. Instead, Bezmenov edited and planted propaganda materials in foreigner media and accompanied delegations of Novosti's guests from foreigner countries on tours of the Soviet Union or to international conferences held in the Soviet Union. After several months, Bezmenov was forced to be an informer. While still maintaining his position as a Novosti journalist, he then used his journalist duties to help gather information and spread disinformation to foreigner countries for the purposes of Soviet propaganda and subversion. Rapid promotion followed and Bezmenov was once again assigned to Bila in 1969, this time as a Soviet press officer and a public relations agent for the KGB. 
he continued Novosti's propaganda efforts in New Delhi, working out of the Soviet embassy. Bezmenov was directed to slowly but surely establish the Soviet sphere in, of influence in India. In the same year, a secret directive of the Central Committee opened a new secret department in all embassies of the Soviet Union around the world, titled the Research and Counter-Propaganda Group. Bezmenov became a deputy chief of the department, which gathered intelligence from sources like Indian informers and agents on influential or political significant citizens of India. Bezmenov stated that he was also instructed not to waste time with idealists, leftists, as these would become disillusioned, bittered and adversarial when they realized the true nature of Soviet communism. During that period, increasingly seeing the Soviet system as insidious and ruthless, Bezmenov began carefully planning to defect to the West. According to a statement provided to the Delhi police by the so-called Russian Information Center on February 8, 1970, Bezmenov was set to see a screening of the American film The Incident with two of his colleagues. However, it was reported by them at the time that he had not bought his ticket and told them he would join them in a moment and try to purchase one from a scalper outside the theater. Bezmenov never returned to the theater and put on hippie clothes complete with a beard and wig before joining a tour group. By this means he escaped to Athens in Greece. His defection was reported in the United States with Soviet sources stating he was not important and did clerical work, and American intelligence openly stating they believed him to be an agent of the KGB. At the time, his whereabouts were depicted in the American media as unknown. After contacting the American embassy and undergoing extensive interviews with United States intelligence, the Central Intelligence Agency was able to help Bezmenov seek asylum in Canada, granted by the administration of Pierre Trudeau. The CIA and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police advised him to adopt a new name and identity for reason of safety. In order to save face with the embarrassment of a defection within the KGB ranks, the Delhi residency officially reported he had been abducted and his son, his closest surviving relative, was given financial compensation. After studying political science at the University of Toronto for two years and working on an Ontario farm for three, in 1973 Bezmenov was hired by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation in Montreal, broadcasting to the Soviet Union as a part of the CBS International Service. This is when he met his wife Tess. In 1976 Bezmenov left the CBS and began freelance journalism. He later became a consultant for Almanac Panorama of the World Information Network. Bezmenov later claimed that the KGB successfully used the Soviet ambassador to Canada to pursue Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau to apply pressure to have him removed from that position. He also claimed that he received veiled death threats from the KGB. Bezmenov moved to Los Angeles in 1980s. In 1983, at the lecture in Los Angeles, Bezmenov expressed the opinion that he wouldn't be surprised if the Soviet Union has shot down Korean Airlines Flight 007 in order to kill Larry McDonald, an anti-communist democratic member of the United States House of Representatives. Around the same time, Bezmenov had a child in the West, a daughter named Tanya. He later had a son named Jonathan. In 1984, he gave an interview to G. Edwards Griffin. In the interview, Bezmenov explains the methods used by the KGB for the gradual subversion of the political system of the United States. Under the pen name Thomas D. Schumann, Bezmenov authored the book Love Letter to America. The author's biography of the book likens Bezmenov to Winston Smith, from George Orwell's 1984. Other books by Bezmenov are No Novosti is Good News, World Tough Police, Black is Beautiful, Communism is Not. Thomas D. Schumann was associated with the World Information Network of Westlake Village in California. 
In 1984, the Washington Post reported Bezmenov publicly denounced admission of a Soviet cruise ship to Los Angeles during the 1984 Olympic Games, stating that they were placed there under the goose of entertainment, but maintained electronic surveillance equipment abroad to monitor radio and telephone communications. In another interview, Bezmenov would describe a series of methods he posited that the KGB has used during the games, including espionage by Soviet foreign journalists as well as the use of the personnel to provide better control against possible athletic defections. In 1989, he and his wife divorced. That same year, he moved to Windsor, Ontario, while she stayed in Montreal. Two years later, he began teaching international relations at the University of Windsor. In late December 1992, Bezmenov visited Tess and their children in Montreal for Christmas. Two weeks later, Bezmenov's death was reported on January 6, 1993. According to the Windsor Star, he died of a massive heart attack, a tribute in part to alcoholism, on Tuesday, January 5, 1993. Since his death, Yuri Bezmenov's Soviet subversion model has been studied and interpreted by faculty and staff at the Joint Special Operations University. His model of subversion has been used by the GSOU to analyze historical events since his death, including the decade-long Russian campaign that preceded the 2008 Russo-Georgian War. His work has also been cited by senior director of UPenn Penn Bider Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement and former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Dr. Michael Carpenter. His lectures have also been used by Yale senior lecturer Asha Rangappa to illustrate the concept of active measures in Russia's historical disinformation campaigns in the United States. On August 19, 2020, Bezmenov's 1984 interview discussing active measures was used in the worldwide teaser reveal of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have to admit this is one hell of a story, I would say one hell of a biography. I'm, I'm absolutely um, shocked that we don't have a full-scale Hollywood movie about this guy. I mean, this biography is... Is a movie biography, I would say. Anyways, let me know what do you think about Mr. Bezmenov in a comment section below. And do you agree about his appearance in the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War? Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for future great Call of Duty content. And until next time, my fellow Verdansk citizens, I wish you all the best and stay frosty.